In this video, what I'm going to be showing is an alternative method for adding some reinforcement to a temporary printed hybrid prosthesis. So we all love the uh, affordability of being able to print prosthetics. However, their downfall is always that they're pretty weak and uh, we needed these things to be able to last throughout the entire process of having that patient temporized. Um, so what I'm going to show is a option that allows you to create some pre-made channels uh, into this hybrid. And these channels would allow you to take um, some uh, resin impregnated fiberglass uh, and lay into those channels and then cure them, wrap them over in resin, and that would give a lot of reinforcement. Now, I've previously shown how to use the Trilore material um, and make a slot where you can insert one of those pre, uh, prefabricated Trilore bars that you've trimmed down to shape. Uh, this is just another additional um, method of being able to create this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my select tool and I'm going to make a relatively small spot size, maybe a couple of millimeters in width. And I'm just going to create some channels throughout this uh, temporary. And so I'm going to go around and just draw the area that I want to create the channel. So I'm going to do one continuous one around the exterior. I'm going to come right in below the gingival margins of the teeth uh, because you do always end up trimming these a little bit. And so if I get too close to the borders where you're going to reduce flanges, then that might make for uh, having exposed fiberglass, which we would like to avoid. The weakest point in these is always right up here at the midline where it makes the curve. And so up here, I'm going to do an additional uh, circle to add more reinforcement in this area. And then let's go to the underside and let's do a similar type of thing. I'm just going to crisscross around all of my pickup holes, kind of a figure eight design. And so now you can see kind of the design that I've gone with. I've got one continuous one around the outside and then the same thing on the underside. So with that done, first of all, I'm going to optimize the boundary and then I'm going to smooth the boundary. And you can see this is where I want to create the channels. And now the last step is I'm going to go to edit, extrude, but I don't want to extrude outward. Uh, rather, what I want to do is create a channel inward. So I'm going to take the offset and I'm going to go to, let's start with negative two and just see what it looks like. And I can tell that, you know, I've, I've gone basically too thin down in this area, but I also notice that it's all doing a channel straight up and down. Uh, that's because we're on constant. Let's change the direction to normal. And now that's looking a little bit more like what I want. I uh, do see that there's a couple little spikes and areas in here that are not going to be ideal. And I think I noticed one area where, yeah, right in here you can see that the mesh is showing through where it's crossed over itself. So let's take that down a little bit, go to 1.5. And I like that a little bit better. Okay, so let's just accept it. And then run your analysis, inspector. Try to find if there's any kind of imperfections in your mesh. That looks good. We can click done. And now I'm just going to export this for printing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, one without the channels for fiberglass and then also the one with the channels. And I'm going to print both of these on the Sprint Ray Pro. Um, the idea is I want to do one in, I'm just using gray resin, and I'm going to do uh, a hybrid with both and then just do a strength test. I'm going to just try to crush it in my hand. I don't have the equipment to really measure, uh, but we'll just see which one of these is stronger. And if in fact I can't break it with my hands, I would say that's a great indication that you're probably not going to be able to break it in the mouth either. All right, there we go. We'll just print both of these up and then I'll update once they're printed. Okay, so here I have the two printed hybrids. As you see, this one, no holes, uh, no channel. All right, it does have holes. It just doesn't have the channels. And so we'll do a strength test on that. This one, as you can see, the uh, channels that I've designed are built into this. And so now what I'm going to do is I've taken just a bunch of fiberglass strands 
Now, uh, obviously, you want to use some dental strands, but the stuff I'm using right here, I just got, you know, from like the stuff you get at Walmart for like working on auto body. Um, for my purposes, that's, that's really all that I need because the principle is the same. Um, you know, like with anything dental, you get to write the word dental on it and uh, charge a whole lot more for it. And so what I'm doing is I'm just tapping in these little particles. And as I work my way along, I'm just going to tack it. Because once that's tacked in on an area, that's going to make it a lot easier to handle from that point forward. Okay, so now I'm just using a brush. Only downside to this, you can kind of get a little messy. So you want to kind of keep your hands clean, your working field clean. And you want to make sure that you don't get any of this fiberglass up on the actual teeth because obviously again anything that's exposed to the mouth is going to attract plaque be rough to the tongue all of that stuff so find you some good dental fiberglass when you do this Now the curing light is just tacking it in place. This is not going to get it to its full hardness. Okay, so we put in the fiberglass. Uh, that takes, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes to do that. And let's now test and see how strong these two are. Now I've written an F on this one. This is one with fiberglass. This is the one without. Again, the exact same file, um, exact same dimensions, same polish. There's no extra material on one that there's not on the other. And I just wanna see if I can break this thing. So let's start, first of all, with the one without fiberglass. And I'm gonna just try to get the squeeze. And relatively easy, that just popped right apart. Okay, and you can see, I guess, where the weak spot is, was right there. And in my experience, if you ever try to make just a plain printed prosthetic that does not have any kind of reinforcement, this is the, the result most times. All right, so, I'm hoping this won't break, but we'll see. I've never tried this. Um, I'm gonna do the exact same thing and begin squeezing. And I'm, I'm not able to just yet, and that kind of hurts, so I'm gonna switch hands. Mm. All right, so I don't know if you can see that, but that is uh, what felt like me drawing blood as I'm trying to squeeze this thing. It's not going to break. Um, I don't know what the strength is. I just know it's really, really high because of all that fiberglass that's embedded in here. 